Florence, a city famed for its Renaissance paintings and architecture. And in this small workshop, another art, shoemaking, is being rediscovered, with students like Bukola from Nigeria flocking to the Riachi Academy to learn the trade. I actually always wanted to make shoes, you know, and I just thought, okay, where is the best place to learn how to make shoes, if not Italy? I've learned so much in just six weeks, and I can't wait to go back home and do what I've learned. <laughs> There are just six students in this class, yet the only Italian on the eight-week course, which costs around 5,000 euros, is Daniele Ortolani. He'd been repairing shoes for eight years before deciding to learn how to make them. I feel a bit special, yes, unique, and I hope to pursue my career in spite of the difficulties artisans meet, at the very least in Italy. The course is run by master cobbler Angelo Imperatrice, who learnt shoemaking from his uncles. At 75 years old, he's seen the industry change dramatically and today bemoans Italian bureaucracy that he says is destroying the trade. The craft is essentially dead because of all the administrative issues. Billing, for example, even for small jobs. Some shoemakers I know can't even read or write, so you can imagine when they have to declare VAT, issue invoices, they say, no, 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 I'm quitting. While Italians appear to be shying away from Angelo's expertise, Mashizan, a television producer from Singapore, hopes to launch his own brand of shoes one day. My target audience is really um, women, professional women who, you know, who who are stylish and classic and elegant. Wouldn't it be ideal to get a, an A-lister to wear your shoes and say, who are you wearing? And you wear a pair of mushrooms, you know. <laughs> Italy is celebrated for its leather industry, and these students will hope that some of the expertise rubs off on them as they put their best foot forward and branch out on their own.